Good morning, everybody. Happy Christmas Eve. Welcome to Unity of Jupiter. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have a wonderful service planned for you today. Our special music is by the U Unity of Jupiter Choir, and I'd like to invite them up to the platform to uh, open, thing, the, open the service for us.
Let's see if I'm, t I'm turned on. Yes, yes I am. <clears throat> well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I uh, made a little bit of a rookie mistake this week, not understanding that Christmas Eve was on a Sunday. And so uh, we've doubled up with two services today, which is great, but we don't have quite as big a turnout as we thought we could. But I want to thank the choir. I've been here the last four weeks for choir practice. The time that people commit to this church is really incredible. I want to thank Karen and Larry and Michael, everyone who makes it possible. So welcome to Unity of Jupiter. We are an out of this world spiritual community. The Wawa of churches. We always welcome all. We always welcome all. And I want to give a little thanks. I've also went to my first board meeting this week. And I want to thank the board for everything they do. And we're going to be losing three of them coming up in February. We're going to, our president, vice president, and another. So we're going to have three slots that we need a leadership team to, to help us run this ministry into the future. So hopefully we will, God will uh, provide us with those people. And I want to thank the congregation and everyone for coming today is really, I have my son and daughter here today. So if it was <laughs> basically the only thing I really wanted for Christmas is this. And, and, and they're sitting with my mother, so it even makes me more happy. So if no one has told you today, if no one's told you I love you, let me be the first. I love you. Powerful words. We have a great service plan today. You're going to hear lots of music from the Unity Choir. And today is the fourth week of Advent. Advent came really late this year, like the latest it can come, because today is Sunday, the last day of Advent. So we're going to light a candle for Advent. And the candle we light, as we light this candle for Advent, I wanted to light all four of them, actually. Hopefully this works. But we have the candle for hope and hope, hope and faith. We have the candle for peace. We have the candle for love. And today we have the candle for joy. So the four Advent candles. The joy that is Christmas. The birth of Christ should happen all the time, every day. Christmas should not be put for this one time of year. It should suddenly be happening to us all the time, every day. So how do we birth the Christ? I'm going to be talking about that a lot today. But we say, I love you. We say, thank you. We say, I'm sorry. That's the way we birth the Christ within us. So as we celebrate the season with newfound glee, joy to the world, the Savior is born. And now if you'll join me in our unity thought, our statement of faith, God is all there is and present everywhere. This is the force of love and wisdom that underlies all of existence. And our affirmation for today, I am filled with joy. And we are filled with joy. As soon as we have the spiritual awakening, joy comes upon us. It is ours to have. So to bring a little bit of Catholicism in here, I want you to just greet your neighbor right now. Peace be unto you, and peace be to your neighbor. Peace, peace, peace. And now I'd like to welcome Sherry Sova. She wasn't really prepared for this, but here she is. Mary, Mary, I am Sherry. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. And uh, we are going to start with our Unity of Jupiter core value. We are unity, all my brothers, sisters, and me. And the daily word for today is joy. And we affirm 
With joy, I prepare for the rebirth of Christ within. Christmas Eve brings back memories of childhood anticipation. What's in the packages under the tree? What other goodies will be in there this, in the morning? But now I relish in the anticipation of joy my gifts will bring to others as I watch my loved ones open their presents. This joy blooms in my heart as the Advent season draws to a close, and I prepare to receive my most precious gift, the rebirth of Christ within. I still my mind and I become present. I contemplate the awe of the shepherds as they heard of Jesus' birth. I think of the veneration of the kings who traveled to honor him. I surrender to my feelings of awe and reverence, preparing for the joyous rebirth of light and love within me. And today's daily word is inspired by Luke 2.10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing the good news of great joy for all of the people. And now we have a few announcements. Uh, first announcement is Board President Michael Beecher has some news about the Unity of Boulder property. Thank you, Sherry. So um, as you may or may not know, the uh, Jupiter Town Council had its uh, town council meeting last Tuesday and the C-Class townhomes proposal was brought before the board one more time and it was approved. So what that means is it's real now. Um, you know, it's gonna be a while, I would think, before we actually have to physically move. They're gonna have to get permits, they're gonna have to break ground and all that stuff. But I, the reason I'm up here talking to you now is to, I think we all as a congregation need to form a clear image in our minds of what it is we want for this church. Um, we were talking at the board meeting, I think we, we want a facility that has obviously a sanctuary, uh, an office for Carol, some classrooms, some storage space, obviously within uh, close proximity to, uh, to this location. So. Number one, form that vision in your mind of, of the place we want to, to move into and keep your eyes and ears open. Um, I'm looking, all the board members are looking, John's looking, but if you hear something or if you know somebody who might be in real estate, might be able to present us with the perfect location, obviously let us know. Thank you. We can do this, guys. Formulate the perfect place. All right, so that being said, the annual meeting for our service is coming up on Sunday, February 11th. Three board member vacancies will need to be filled. So if you have an interest in participating on the board and being an important part of keeping the church operating smoothly, now is the time to step up and step forward. Just speak to any one of our current board members and let them know that you would like to be considered for nomination. The current board members are Michael Beecher, Maureen Cullen, Craig Keller, Sandy Simons, Sandra Simmons, and Doug Blackburn. And there are, and it is, it is an honor to serve, I will just tell you that. Um, there are ongoing activities at Unity of Jupiter as well. Um, so Monday morning yoga with Patricia Carroll from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Please bring your own mat and a yoga strap. Her classes are inclusive of all skill levels. So wherever you at, feel free to come. Uh, in, individuals with chronic pain, physical issues, and tensions are encouraged to attend. And due to the holiday schedule, the next class will be January 8th. The Monday evening Course of Miracle class with Reverend Maureen Cullen is at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And again, due to the holiday schedule, the next class will be January 8th, since those, those two are both on Mondays. Uh, Wednesday at noon is our weekly midday prayer group led by Pam Shostin, our lead uh, prayer chaplain, as well as the other chaplains. Powerful, powerful prayer. It, everything happens in prayer. It's powerful. So come and join us Wednesdays. 
and also healing the first Friday of every month. The healing circle with Carolyn Cohen is at 7 p.m. And the next healing circle will be Friday, January 5th. That is every the first Friday of every month. Sunday mornings, 9.30 a.m., Harmony Exercise Meditation with Reverend John Denny, another powerful exercise to do. And then tonight, tonight, come back. You have more of the choir will be here. Candlelight service at 7 p.m. Please join us for this beautiful service featuring a program of Christmas music with the Unity Choir, and it will be wonderful, wonderful. Warms, warms the heart. Christmas Eve. And then coming up next week, our, our Burning Bowl service will be on New Year's Eve at 7 p.m. New Year's Eve does fall on a Sunday this year, so we will have our regular Sunday morning service. And then again, the Burning Bowl ceremony at 7, at 7 p.m. that evening. Um, it's a way to release and renew for the new year. And the anticipation builds here at Unity of Jupiter as Reverend Diane Robinson returns to Jupiter to welcome in the new year. Save the date for January 7th. We will host a formal installation ceremony for our new spiritual leader, Reverend John Denny, and followed by an insightful mastermind workshop given by Diane Robinson. Um, the special music at 1030 that morning will be by Charlie Thweet, and it promises to be a wonderful day. So we'll have Diane, the installation, it's going to be wonderful. And speaking of Charlie Thweet, he will also be doing a benefit concert the night before. So Saturday evening, January 6th at 7 p.m., all proceeds will be going to the church and most of you know Charlie and his music. And even if you don't, please come Saturday evening for a wonderful experience with Charlie. It is magnificent. It is great. Um, he has a talent for turning any room of people into a connected family. And as a young man, he took a huge leap of faith from his budding architecture career into touring life of a full-time spiritual caboodler. Is that how you say that? And, spe and speaker. Um, since 1981, Charlie has inspired tens of thousands of people in 15 countries and six continents with his talks, concerts, and workshops. He has also been the musical open opener for luminaries as Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra, Ram Dass, Tony Robbins, Louise Hay, and Charlie has 18 life-changing music albums and he has appeared on a national television and radio. You don't want to miss that concert. That's going to be great. All right. And so now to lead us into meditation, let us join by singing Shirley the Presence. Okay, we don't have Joanne here today, so we're going to do it a cappella. That's right. No, it's fine. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. <clears throat> so I invite you to find a comfortable place now. Taking a deep breath and closing your eyes and remembering we are here to celebrate the birth of Christ within us, each of us. Birthing this Christ child at Christmas time. And the way we do that is to think, I love you, because God is love. I am love. We are love. 
filling our thoughts, filling our minds and our bodies with this power of love, this power of God. And how do we awaken the Christ within us? We think, I am grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welling up this feeling of gratitude inside, knowing that it aligns us with God, bringing us in perfect contact with this love of God. And let us take full accountability. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Knowing that we are forgiven. I am forgiven. We only condemn ourselves. And how do we awaken the Christ within us? We realize perfect health, knowing that God's law is perfect health and we become what we think. So make that realization that God is, I am, radiant health now, filling ourselves with that color of beautiful orange, that orange red of the sunrise. I am perfect health. And realizing perfect harmony, I am perfect harmony, perfect peace. This is birthing the Christ within. Accepting this peace at a higher level than we ever have. I see peace in all my relationships, all my business affairs, all of my life. And let us realize abundant supply again, a principle of God, enough and to spare for every need. When they fed the multitudes, there were some left over. So make the realization that I and my abundance are one. Filling ourselves with apple green, knowing that God is our supply. Endless eternal supply. I am abundant supply. Thank you, thank you. And as we welcome Christmas tomorrow and we come into 2024, let us place these into God's hands, into right action. We know all is working out in perfect order. Together we place the next home for this ministry into right action knowing it's already there, just awaiting our acceptance. And each and every one of us, we place into right action for 2024, seeing it as the best year ever. We thank thee for the opportunity of thinking these thoughts, these higher Christ-like thoughts asking special blessings for each and every person here, for our families and friends, and for the planet as a whole. We ask that you fill us with love, gratitude, and forgiveness for each and every person. We ask this all in God's name. And now to finish this time of prayer and meditation, if you'll please join me in the Lord's Prayer after a moment of silence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, if you'll welcome our Unity Choir back up on stage.
They look disappointed. I was hoping for another one too. On. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Here we go. I was looking in the wrong place for the light. <laughs> ah, that's what we all do, huh? Look in the wrong place for the light. That seems to be a problem we all have a lot of times. Here we are, week four of Advent, joy. And I love this time of year, mainly because I can already know my topic for the week because Christianity tells me what it's going to be. So I, I kind of went with my last, when I was talking about peace, I looked up all those acronyms and I wanted to find, and I looked, what, I don't know why, but when I started this service, I thought of joy. I wonder what an acronym for joy is. And the first one I looked up was J is for Jesus. I also learned that last year I know <laughs> Karen informed me that last year at the Christmas uh, at the Christmas service I never said the word Jesus once, not once <laughs> on his birthday. Now I was just learning how to do this, you know, so I don't want to be stepping on any toes, but I realize now it's an incredibly important word. J is for Jesus. O is for others, and Y is for yourself. And if we want joy in our lives, that's the way we got to do it. We have to put Jesus, others, and ourselves. Well, where do all these things reside? Where does Jesus reside? Where do others reside? And where does myself reside? If you think about it, they all reside right inside me. Right now, I see you guys, but as soon as you walk out that door, it's only an image in my mind. It's a thought. I see my daughter and son, but when they leave, I, I don't know what they're going to be doing, but they're in my mind. Others are in my mind as well as myself. So that's where this whole picture, this whole movie takes place, is right inside me. So how do we find joy? There was a story told me a while ago, which I really think kind of sums it up. So there was a man praying to God, and he asked God, What's the difference between heaven and hell? And God thought for a second, and he said, well, let me show you. So they went up, and they opened this first door, and inside the door is a beautiful banquet. All the food you'd ever need, everything you'd ever need, and all these people sitting around the table starving, emaciated. And they all have a spoon, and the spoon's a little bit longer than their arm, and they can all get all the food they want, but they can't get the food into their mouth because the spoon's a little bit too long. So they're all starving to death. And God looked at him and he goes, that's hell. Said, okay. So what's heaven? So they open up the next door. It is exactly the same picture, except all the people are joyous and happy and well-fed. And so they're looking and, and the guy realizes that they're feeding each other with their long spoons so they can get the food and then they can give each other food. And they all start coming together and looking out for each other. And that, he goes, is heaven. So the more I looked into the difference between joy and heaven, it kept coming back to service, helping other people, being of service and helping others. So there's something very close about joy and service being one and the same. So there's a, I don't know how to say this person's name, but Rabinadrath, Tagore, she said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. So it is in this act of service we become joyful, not in the act of getting and everything else. And then Mother Teresa said, joy is prayer. Joy is strength. Joy is love. And joy is a net of love by which you can catch other souls. When we're joyful and happy, we catch other souls. 
So for the, for the Advent candle we lit, it's lighting that light of Christ within us, that joy that is Christmas. Again, it should be happening all the time. It shouldn't be this one time a year. Each and every day, we should be living this Christ consciousness. So what unity really celebrates is not so much the birth of Christ in the Bible, even though we do celebrate that, but it's this birth of Christ within each and every one of us, this awakening. And when we have this awakening, we receive the fruit of the Spirit. So Eric Butterworth said unity is the religion of Jesus, not a religion about Jesus. We learn to make it part of us. And we know few there be that find it, but I think we can find that joy if we keep looking. So the word joy or rejoice is used 430 times in the Bible. It's got to be a pretty important instruction. Happiness only appears 10 times. So happiness and joy. Happiness is something we strive for, but it can come and go. Some days I'm happy, some days I'm not. Joyful, I became the day I accepted God, the day that this all became real to me. I accepted a, an element of joy which has never been taken away, but it's really just mine to accept. I don't really have to search for it. So when we talk about Jesus telling us about these things, he always says they're mine. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give my peace to you. Then he says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. So he talks about my peace, my love. And then in St. John 15, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So these are all the things that he's giving to us. So when we have this awakening, the fruit of the Spirit is ours. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. As soon as we enter into the spiritual life, we receive those things. They are ours to have. So Chris Jackson gave a sermon last week, and he, and he said that thank you are probably the most powerful words we can say in the life. I always say, I love you or thank you. Well, what he pointed out that maybe the most important two words in the Bible or in our life could be the word, follow me. Follow me. And Jesus said, if, anyone, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. This is the coolest thing because the, he left our, he left us these tracks. So how do we do it? How do we keep his word? He said, do as I do. He told us exactly what we need to do. He laid down footsteps for us to follow. So we worship God, we praise God, but do we really follow God? Do we emulate him? Do we make a choice? You know, that, that saying, what would Jesus do now? Making that choice over and over again is living our higher Christ self. If we're actually putting it through that litmus test, what would God do? What would Christ do? So how do we follow? Jesus said, come follow me. Keep my sayings. So one of his sayings is, I love you. Another one is, thank you. Keep his sayings. He said, I have overcome now, by following my footsteps, you shall overcome. Again, all we have to do is do what he did. So have you kept the sayings of Jesus? Have you used those thoughts, I and my Father are one regularly? Is there a, a Bible verse or something that comes to you over and over that just gives you that sense of peace? Because those are the things that will bring that joy, keeping that. The, the, the harmony exercise for the last seven years, each and every morning, going through that, that God is, I am realization, that I and my Father are one, has caused a change in me, which, is, which I can't put into any other words. It becomes crystallized within us. So it's mental discipline, day after day, night after night, until that inertia of the mentality is overcome and the way is open for the descent of the Spirit. 
we have to overcome that negative thinking that I'm not good enough. And we do that by over and over and over affirming these things through mental discipline. And then there's no room for those other ones anymore. And no one can do this for us. This is a personal thing. Each and every one of us has this awakening within inside himself, this awakening to God. But no one can do it for us. And I don't really think you want anyone else to do it for you. So first of all, how come Jesus could say that? How come he could say, follow me? Because he knew it. He knew how to do it. You know, if you want to know how to do something, you ask a professional. If I wanted to learn how to piano, I would talk to Karen. Probably not my son. They could teach me the piano, <laughs> right? I want to find out what people have that I can learn. There's plenty I can learn from Luke, but piano wouldn't be one of them. So we really have no idea. So when we talk about judgment, we have no idea where we came from or where we're going. So having a really good judgment about what's going on is just a really part of our BS system, our belief system, right? And that's really what it comes back to. But I do know one thing, that when we use love and gratitude consciously in our day, in our hearts, it makes life better makes life happier, there's more laughing going on and more fun going on. We can read, study, and meditate all we want, but we need to follow, we need to take action if we really want to, re if we really want to receive the benefits, the promises that are offered to us in those fruits of the Spirit, we need to take action. Each of us is a unique individual. Last week, Diane Robinson and Chris Jackson gave a sermon called Rudolph, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Sermons. And, you know, Rudolph was kind of, everybody was prejudiced against Rudolph until they found out what his light was, his special meaning. So we can't judge because everyone's unique. My friend Kevin Rice says, not only should you not judge because judgment does not bring joy, I'm saying you can't judge. You are, you are completely inability, we have an inability to judge. I can't make a judgment because I don't have all the facts. I don't know where you came from. I don't know where you're going. I would have to know a lot of things to put in a, a really solid judgment because I need to know. I need to know the past, the future, of which I know none of. So we can't judge. The one kind of judgment we really, really, really have to be careful of is condemnatory judgment, and that's really the judgment of ourselves, judging ourselves making ourselves not good enough. I can't really judge you guys because I don't have the information, but I can lay myself some good ones. And unfortunately, he said last week he's been giving sermons for 25 years and he still suffers from condemnatory judgment. That was a little bit of a bummer. I was hoping we'd get over that. <laughs> but anyway, it's easy to be hard on yourself and judge ourselves. So if we look at the most important sermon ever given was the Sermon on the Mount, and it's all a sermon about service. Chris gave a little Cliff Notes version of it. But Jesus said, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, care for the ailing, welcome the woeful, pray privately, invest in heaven. As we heard before, learn from the lilies, get one with nature, give invisibly, not to be seen by men, but to give for the sake of giving. Acquit the guilty, forgive. Each and every person, forgive, forgive, forgive. Love the enemy, pray for the persecutor. Don't judge. Pause from picking. So the little, he used the idea of picking out the speck in your eye when I got a full log. He brought a log up on stage and stuck it in his eye. And he's like, all right, come on up. Who wants me to get the speck out of their eye? And uh, it's kind of a funny thing, but that's how we go along life, you know? I'm going to fix you while I'm all screwed up. Um, so joy. We get the fruit of the Spirit. We receive, when we receive this God, we receive all those things, the fruit of the Spirit, which I love. So how do we do it and what can we do about it? Joy is, for, is equal to service, and guess what? That's equal to unity. I'm seeing it more and more. And I, I explain this to a lot of people. I'm not a group person. I've always been, I like 
two to four people, and I got my little group, and we can go do what we want. And the bigger groups was always something a little uncomfortable to me. And I have a friend, Coach Dan, he thrives. If there's 60 people in a football team, he's in his element where I get a little nervous. But now, especially spending some time with the choir, spending some time with the board, this, this feeling of a team is so, it just, it, it, it's like it just gives you everything you need. And, and I never really understood that before, but I'm feeling it more and more as we come together here. Another thing we can do is be of service. So, or as I say, be like Bova. So my friend Ron Bova here, I met him a few years ago, and I don't think service was really part of his life at that point. And since then, he's worked for Place of Hope, worked for numerous organizations in Marnon County, including Surfers for Autism. Every Saturday, he cooks food for the homeless people. And I, I've just watched this like joy well up inside him. And for a while, I, we saw this picture of him. And I'm like, who's the guy in the picture? And they're like, oh, his name's Ron Bova. I'm like, well, he looks happy. So I started just saying, be like Bova. I didn't even know who he was. I'd never met him, but I was like, well, I like that guy, I like his energy, so let's be like Bova. But now, looking back, I can see the action steps he's taken so that we can emulate that. And service is unbelievable. Another thing we can do is make Christmas every day. Don't wait for December 25th to have the Christ born in you. Use I love you every day. Use I am sorry. Please forgive me. Use the principles and the thoughts which he's given us that he says is going to bring you joy. You don't have to. It's not required. It makes it a lot more fun, though. Thomas Aquinas says, man cannot live without joy. For when he is deprived of the true spiritual joys, it is necessary that he becomes addicted to carnal pleasures. That's a scary thought. But we need to receive these spiritual joys so that we don't have to resort to those carnal pleasures, which, you know, have run more than one of our lives along the way. Another thing we can do is seek first that kingdom of God each and every day. Find a practice where you go inside and you get to that place where you're one with God. It's, you know, it, it, it's our right. Jesus, Jesus gave it to us. I and my Father are one. But going to that place. And the second thing we can do is see the kingdom of God in others, in everyone we meet. Realize they're a divine child of God doing the very best they can at any given point in time. Makes it a lot easier. Follow me. Study. What did Jesus tell us to do? It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. It'd be a lot harder to follow what Elon Musk tells us to do than Jesus, but we can do it. You know, it's all laid down right for us. Tell a joke. Make people laugh. I've always said, you know, if I said nothing worthwhile up here, but I made you guys laugh twice, you're going to come back next week because I made you feel good. It's like, it doesn't matter if I educate you, if we all get to feel a little better when we walk out of here and want to come back next week, you know? There's a reason we want to be uplifted a little bit. So those are the main things that I wanted to touch on today. But birthing this Christ within us. How do we receive joy and be joyous individuals as we go out and attack life? And the way we do it is by follow me, following these well-defined footsteps of basically love, gratitude, and forgiveness is all we really need to do. So now, as we prepare our offerings, let us remember again that abundance is a law of God. God is our supply, and it's an inexhaustible, eternal law of supply. We will always have everything we need. You know, at 61, we still, I still get nervous, like, oh my God, or my wife. It's like, well, it's always worked till now. Why is it going to stop, you know? We're working with this immutable law. So it is in giving that we receive. Everything that you give will be returned to you, multiplied, a hundred times. And I want to thank everyone for coming. And if you can make it back tonight, I would really appreciate it. And so would the choir, because we're going to have a full choir up here. And we're going to bring the angels into town. So...
as we are. So thank you again. Thank you for your offerings. And then we'll get ready to listen to a few more songs of the choir as we take our offerings. And maybe we'll listen to Sherry for a church in session. Thank you, John, and you are bringing joy to all of us here. And now, as we move into our celebration of abundance, our opportunity to give back from our financial abundance, let us begin by reading the Unity of Jupiter Prosperity Blessing together. In a universe overflowing with the abundance of good, we acknowledge God as a source of all our blessings. We affirm our receptivity and acceptance of this good from every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected. Our abundant good comes to us now. Thank you, God, and so it is. There are many ways to give. You can drop your gift in the baskets that will be coming around. You can text your donation to 561-581. 1119, or you can give by debit or credit card today after the service in our office, you may see Carol. Most of the options can be set up for automatic recurring giving as well. Now to keep our time of giving sacred, I would like you to now take your gift in your hand and bless it. You are planting seeds to your own prosperity and giving back to God from the abundance that has already been provided to you. Breathe life into your gift and thank God that you have this gift to give. And now affirm with me the offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
Hello, hello? If you think that was good, come back tonight. <laughs> so again, I want to just put a thought of gratitude out for all the gifts that have been given, seeing, it, seeing these gifts expanded and multiplied. So let's bring up the gifts and the prayers. So first, let's give a thought of thanks for this abundant supply, knowing that every need is fulfilled with some leftovers. Each and every need, I and my abundance are one. Enough and to spare for every need. God's law of supply. And for all the prayers in this prayer box, we don't even know what they are. We don't have to because God already knows all the answers. And we take each and every prayer in this box, we put it in God's hands placing it into right action, knowing in our hearts that everything and everyone is working out in perfect order. We say, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. And now, if you'll please rise, join hands, we'll sing the peace song, followed by the prayer for protection. 